Cześć, tak się macie, tutaj oczywiście Damian. W związku z tym, że nadchodzą Mistrzostwa Europy, postanowiłem zaprosić na mój kanał kogoś naprawdę specjalnego. Nie byłoby to możliwe, gdyby nie pomoc partnera tego odcinka, STS, oficjalnego sponsora reprezentacji Polski. Ma on dla Was specjalną ofertę, o której zaraz powiemy, jednak jak widzicie po tytule po miniaturce, dzisiaj czeka mnie rozmowa z Peterem Schmeichelem, zwycięzcą Mistrzostw Europy. Peter jest ambasadorem STS, no i właśnie, w związku z tym, że zbliżają się Mistrzostwa Europy, to oczywiście STS zarówno na stronie, jak i w aplikacji mobilnej przygotował mnóstwo ciekawych ofert, wyzwań, challenge, no jest tego trochę. No do wygrania jest wielka kasa, dzięki tym challenge'om w puli jest aż półtora miliona złotych. Jak coś, to centrum dowodzenia misją Euro znajdziecie oczywiście na STS.pl i w aplikacji mobilnej. Wygląda to naprawdę znakomicie. Sprawdźcie sami, bo naprawdę warto. Zadania są bardzo proste i każde z nich przybliża Was do wielkiej puli. Jeśli jesteście pełnoletnimi widzami i nie macie jeszcze konta na STS, zarejestrujcie się z kodem EUROPLKD i dostaniecie 30 zł na darmową grę. Teraz czas na rozmowę o piłce nożnej, o Polsce, o jedzeniu. Trochę tego było. Mam nadzieję, że wam się spodoba. Uh, hello Peter, it's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. So, right now I have a few questions, you know, about upcoming tournament uh, Euro 2020. 21, I think we can call it 21. Yeah. You're 2020, 21. Uh, first of all, you played with many great players uh, during your career against yeah. them. Can you name five best players that you have played with or against them during your career? <laughs> But you know, some, you know, I see Dan, I played against, I mean, I played against the best players in the world. I think exactly. I, 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 I will do, I will do this, okay? I will tell you who is the most annoying player I've played against. Okay, okay? that's that's interesting. Inzaki. Most <laughs> annoying striker you could ever face. Always in the right place. Never hits a ball clean. Always, you know, Fer Ferguson, Alex Ferguson once <laughs> said that Inzaki, he was born offside. He was always on the edge. And always one time, he was not on offside. <laughs> I mean, for a striker, he was, he was incredible. He's instincts and and he was so difficult to play against because a lot of what he did was not clean you know when you see things clean you can act to it but when it's not clean when it's a little bit off where you you can kind of say it in a way that he really doesn't know what's going to happen then how how am i supposed as an opponent to know <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen so in was uh he was horrible to play against you always had to think about him very interesting answer because It's not an obvious one, to, I think, for many, no. you know, football fans. Okay, so I think that uh, no, right but the now... thing is, when you play against Zidane, just to give you an, uh, the obvious, you, you play against someone like Zidane, Ronaldo, or, or these kind of players, you know them, you've seen them, you know what they do, you, you know their body language, you, their quality is they can do the, 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 the extreme in, an, in, a, in a very measured and rehearsed way so when they put the ball in the top corner that's because they want to put it in the top corner you know and they're mm -hmm. trying to put it in the top corner or they chest it down they they volley the ball and it's all clean so even even though you can still see what's happening and you can kind of instinctively predict and take precautions in the situation it's still high quality so you will be beaten by them but you are going to be beaten by quality within saggy It was different because he was such he was such an um, I mean just to make absolutely clear that I'm not saying that Inzaghi wasn't great because he yeah, was I great. That. This is full of respect for him, but he was just that little that was this little um, uh, coincidental thing about him where I'm quite sure that he was not aware of what he was doing, but he was doing it. So it was so difficult to play against him because you could only react after the fact. You couldn't react instinctively and do things before the fact. So that that's a big difference. Uh, really good to hear, like you know, your perspective. It's uh, also unbelievable that you have so many memories you played during a great era. And when you say these names like Cantona, Zidane, <laughs> wow! Uh, as uh, the tournament is approaching, it starts in like two weeks. Uh, I want to, to form, in your opinion, best uh, starting, like, you know, <laughs> best players, which... <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have... I've, this is impossible, by the way. This is an impossible job. But I, I've done a team, and I will read the team out for you. 
I might pick a player that's not even going to the Euros. <laughs> okay. But I, I'm going to go with my son in goal. And I do that out of uh, with no bias. I do it because I think he's a really good goalkeeper. And you get to this level, he, I think every time he's been here, he's performed at the highest, highest level. Uh, and I trust him. I trust him completely. I could go Neuer. Uh, Neuer, I think, is, is, is fantastic. But I've always gone Neuer. So this time, I'm going to give him the nod, my own son. So Kasper Schmeichel in goal. And here comes a player that's not picked yet. That's Trent Alexander-Arnold from Liverpool. I am absolutely mystified as to why this player is not number one on Gareth Southgate, uh, Southgate's list. He is an incredible uh, young player. He's so quick, defends really well, reads the game, fantastic, tactically so good. He can kick the ball, cross the ball. He is just a complete right back. And I consider him to be possibly the best right back in the world. Uh, I think the center half combination is a no brainer. Rafael Varane, obviously, a French player, and then Ruben Diaz, who's, who's had, you know, fantastic season, season in Manchester City. Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, my God. Player of the year, by the way, by the, the, the media in England. And then I'm going to go Andy Robinson, Scotland. I'm going to have a Scottish player in there. Because, like, like uh, Trent Alexander Arnold, I, I think that he is on the left hand side, he is the best in the world. And I think the two of them are very much the key to the, or were very much the key to the success that Liverpool had, not this season, but the season before. They, the energy they have, uh, up and down, up and down, the pace they have, and also defending, they are very, very good. And I have to say, I need really good defenders in this team because the, the next players that you will see... Really attacking. Uh, mm, that's a, <laughs> I would say there's a lot of goals in my team. <laughs> so <laughs> good, solid back four with good support for, for, for going forward. Then, then I need somebody who can help these guys out and get the ball back to the guys who can score. And there's, uh, there's only one player in the world who is, you know, at the level where you go, wow, every time you see him. And that's N'Gola Kante uh, from France, obviously Chelsea player now. Uh, He's the best I've ever seen in that position. So, absolute no-brainer for me. Now, Belgium have, they have their number one in the world three years running. So, there's got to be a couple of Belgian players in here. So, of course, uh, uh, Jais Martin, who is a prolific goal scorer. I, I've kind of put him in in sort of a, like an offensive midfield player position. Because <laughs> okay. where else can you, when you've got the other players that I'll come to in a second. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, phew, is he the best player in the world at the moment? I, I think from that position, I think it's safe to say he is. But he uh, he's someone who makes a difference to to a football team. And he, he's also, I mean, in this team, of course, I say I need good defenders who can defend. But this guy can defend from the front. He can lead uh, in the pressing system. And, and his passing and shooting and just the way that he views the game is so interesting. Uh, and at that very highest level, so he's he's of course in my team. And then of course you can't you can't play you can't pick from any players in the world without picking Killian uh, Mbappe. I mean, I can't say anything you about him. You don't have to explain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what a what a player! I mean, okay, struggling a little bit with injuries at the end of the season, but hopefully he for France he will be fit. And then, then I pick Harry Kane up front. Harry Kane is, it's a, it's a player that I, if Harry Kane had played for Manchester United yesterday, Manchester United would have won the game easy. Because Harry Kane has this ability, uh, even in the tightest of games, to find a little bit of space, a little pocket. Uh, and if nobody creates a chance for him, he will create it himself. Uh, he is a prolific 20, 25 goals a season guy. He scores goals. In the last World Cup, uh, top scorer. Uh, I know he takes penalties, but you get a lot of penalties in in, in modern day football. But uh, this guy is unbelievable. Uh, and you know, if you can, you've got the pick of the world. You got to pick Harry Kane. And of course, there's one player missing. Uh, he's from Poland, uh, and he has scored as so a 42 goals in the Bundesliga this season. Uh, Robert Lewandowski. Uh, I spoke 
I spoke to him in uh, 2012 when uh, when when uh, Poland played in I think it was in Warsaw in the Euros. Uh, he was man of the match, and I was I was working for Carlsberg, who was giving man of the match, uh, awarding man of the match, and I, I I awarded it to him, and I said to him because he was at Dortmund at the time, and that and there was a big rumor he was leaving. I said, listen, I really really hope that you come to us to Manchester United. And he says, uh, yeah, well, I would love that. And I'm thinking, wow, this player wants to come to Man United. And he didn't. He went to Bayern Munich and the rest of his, his history. I mean, this guy is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's our what national treasure, yeah. I think it's a good team. Really, <laughs> really offensive, really well built with a balanced midfield. Great defense, great goalkeeper. As a Liverpool fan, I really appreciate the wing backs in in your team. Yeah. Who well, they was are good, good to hear about. Yeah. Do you know what's really remarkable about my team? Yeah. Go on. What's that's one thing missing? I haven't got a single German player in there. Oh yeah. We have to see it. I, I think we we will see a new Germany. <laughs> so we have to wait and see what happened in the in the last couple of World Cups, the last World Cup, sorry, it's not great. So we have to wait and see. But I, I think this is a really, really strong team. It is. It really is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't wait to see all these players perform on the tournament because, well, for many of the players, it may be also the last Euro, for example, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah. I think he can go for a long time, but who knows? I don't maybe. have Ronaldo in the team. Yeah. Exactly. I don't. You, but I think Ronaldo's picked... had. I mean, Ronaldo. I don't know if he's injured, but I mean, the last game for Juventus, he was on the bench. I mean, he's not. Had he didn't the best even of... play. It was yeah. So so I don't know about him. He might carry an injury. I I don't know. I mean, obviously, in he asked me a year ago, I would have Ronaldo in there, no no danger, you know. I would have him instead of maybe someone like Dras Martin. Dras Martin scores goals. That's that that's the one thing, and we we played Belgium. With Denmark now a couple of times we're playing them again uh, in what three weeks. Um, this guy is he's someone he, he kind of he, he sort of moves moves under the radar. He he's not the guy that you would think oh well, but he's the guy that scores goals. And this is this is the quality of the guy you know, and you got to be so careful with him. But of course, if Ronaldo's had a better ending to the season, and I understood. You know where he is in in uh, in terms of his form. He would have come in instead of Dries Martin. I actually had him in there. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I put Cristiano there. But then I decided I decided not to because this is a team that's going to go out and play now. Anyway, if if, if yeah. he's fit, I will substitute him with of with, course uh, yes. with Dries Martin. Yeah. Okay, so I have two more questions uh, and it will be an easy one, a light one. Let's uh, stop about football for one second. You are the STS ambassador for almost uh, two years. Your connection with Poland is a bit more and I know that many journalists mm. ask you about, you know, your roots, uh, your past uh, with uh, Poland. But uh, I have another question because you've been in Poland a few times and uh, beside football, I <laughs> talk on my channel about food then uh, let's say do you have any good memories with <laughs> polish food like <laughs> uh, favorite uh, uh, dish or something like that uh I, I i don't really to be honest i don't um so one what happened uh when my father left poland uh in the way that he left i i, I don't want to go into too many details here because i, I just i i just want to bring you the good news uh, for me, at least, uh, that my autobiography will be out in September, and we have uh, just completed a deal with with a Polish publisher to publish the book in Polish. That's a very big segment about my father and how how he left Poland and how it was. And people, when they read it, will understand why he very he kind of kind of uh, uh, closed Poland for himself but certainly for his kids. So Poland was not part of our life for many, many years uh, until we were nearly grown-ups. Uh, when everything changed and Poland, Poland, you know, after after Lake Valencia and, uh, and, and it became a democracy, a republic, and became part of the EU and all that, 
then it was then it changed for my father as well but it was a little bit too late for us uh, but of course i am now currently i'm in gdansk this is where my father he's he he spent some of his very young years uh, also when he was a uh, uh, you know in his early 20s he came to not to gdansk but to zaport uh, and this is where my parents met so i am actually for me personally i am i'm here in uh, in from, from kind of historical for me to be here. Um, my grandfather was in the army, and of course, Gdansk was the first place that was attacked in the war, and he died on the very first day in this city. So um, there is a little bit of history going on in uh, on my trip here. But my point about just saying all this is that because, because of the circumstances, um, we never really grew up with Poland as, as you know, as a country that we belong to. So therefore, you know, food and culture and all these kind of things, uh, we never really caught on to that. So, uh, and it's a shame. I had, I had a, I had a, I will come, I will come back and exploit my roots. There's no doubt about that. And when I've done that, I will also go into the food, and then we can talk, and I will find the favorite dish. <laughs> okay, okay. All, all, I remember, all, I remember, sir, is, all I remember, by the way, from, from being a kid, and when there was a little bit of Polish food, it was a lot of cabbage. <laughs> yes, we like cabbage, we like onions. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's something. And, uh, okay, to... I will ask you the last question. Let's come back to football. So Poland uh, will be in group with uh, Slovakia, Spain and mm. Sweden. Do you think we yeah. can make it out of the group? Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in uh, so, so what, what you have to look at is, first of all, I mean, obviously, when, when, it, when it's group phase in the Euros, it's, it's, you know, three games. You have, you have very little opportunity to correct wrongs. So what you have to look at is how, how strong is my defense? Uh, you got a strong defense, and have I got someone who can score goals? In in these short tournaments where you only four teams in a group, to score goals is so essential, you know, really essential. Uh, and I mean, you have one of the best in the world. So, Rob, if Lewandowski can score goals, you are, you're in good nick. Sweden, Sweden's a good team. Sweden is always a good team. They might not have the greatest superstars in the world. We know for a fact that the uh, Ibrahimovic won't play. Uh, so you won't know many of the Swedish players sort of top of your head and say this, uh, but they're always well organized. They always perform well in, in tournaments. So that's obviously going to be, um, you know, a, a, a strong opponent. And Slovakia, you know, I, I don't know too much about them. Um, but with Spain, the, yeah. here's a big question, <laughs> right? How, how is Spain going to perform? What they did in Russia, which uh, three years ago, um, that was really, really bad. It, it, it should have been the end of an era. There, there should have been a massive, massive uh, change in personnel. It calmed slowly. Uh, and one of the big things that have happened in the last week is that Sergio Ramos has been, he's been cut off the squad. That is massive. That is massive, massive. In many, many ways, it's it's obviously it's one of the biggest stars in the world. He's the leader in the dressing room. Um, it is a clear message from from uh, from the manager of what he wants to do, but it's also a risky tactic for for the manager, you know, because Sergio Ramos is so popular with with within the players that they, it might it might blow up in his face. It might, but the, so the Spain is an unknown. But I think, and I, I go, I go by what you perform or how you performed in the last six years, maybe. I, I think you have a really, really good chance. I do. And don't forget, you only have to finish third. Don't finish fourth in this tournament. Oh. Finish third. <laughs> well, what is it? Four, four, four of the six, third. I think it is. But uh, that's Deserved. a good chance. I mean, yeah. you, you got a great opportunity. I hope everything will be good. No mm -hmm. more injuries because uh, I think that uh, one of our strikers, Milik, is injured right now. But yeah. we, as a, as Polish fans, we just pray that Lewandowski will be okay because without him, it's... Uh, yeah. 
it's uh, it's a no team so uh, once again P uh, peter i would like to thank you for you know being here talking with My me pleasure. it was a pleasure it was a pleasure to you know see your perspective for football it's always mm -hmm. nice to hear someone with so much knowledge and i hope you will have a nice day and we will see in the future when everything will be normal thank you damien you take care thank you right thanks a lot have a nice day and you bye 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 Mam nadzieję, że rozmowa wam się spodobała. No według mnie bardzo fajnie wyszło. Wiem, że nie byłem gadatliwy, ale to Peter po prostu się nieźle rozgadywał. Pamiętajcie o partnerze tego odcinka STS, bez niego nie byłoby to możliwe. Macie codzienne wyzwania, gdzie właśnie do zgarnięcia jest ta duża kasa, o której mówiłem na początku. Codziennie nowe misje, wyzwania w puli 1,5 miliona złotych, więc euro PLKD. Kod do rejestracji. Dziękuję za oglądanie, życzę wam miłego dnia i do jutra. Cześć!